everyone. Um, sorry we're a few minutes late. Um, and uh, I am very excited to be talking to you today. And uh, we are finally going to show you some of the really cool products that you would normally see in the store, um, but that obviously we can't show you because the store is closed right now. Um, but we still, like I said in my last video from a few days ago, we still want to really connect with you. And um, this is the best way that we can do that right now. So here we go. Um, first off, I want to mention that my husband Michael is here with us today. Say Hello. hi, Mike. And uh, he's going to be helping him helping me out. Um, so he may chime in from time to time. If you have questions or comments, please um, you know send us a do a, do a comment on the bottom of the video, and um, Mike will read them to me as we go along, so that I can kind of multitask and hopefully get to all your questions. And um, the way this is going to work is I'm going to show you some products. And then you can, um, if you're interested, um, you can send us a, a private message, a PM, and um, we will, you know, it'll be first come, first serve. Um, if someone is interested in um, having us ship the item to them, just let us know, and then we can make payment arrangements through PayPal or whatever's convenient. So we'll take care of that um, that way. That's probably the best way to do it. And, um, uh, so like I said, it's going to be first come, first serve, but please, you know, ask as many questions uh, in the comments as, as you would like. I'd be happy to show more close-ups or, you know, different angles, whatever you need. And, um, yeah, and so uh, first, uh, what I would like to start with um, before we go into the products is to tell you a little bit about kind of our, the philosophy behind evolution and, and, and why we do what we do and what we think sets us apart from other people in this space. And so one of the ways, um, one of the things that, as many of you might know, that we make ourselves is our line of framed insects. So we have a very large line of framed insects and um, we like to sort of keep comparisons of what other people do and sort of compare that with our product. And so I wanna show you a little bit, just to start off, why we think, you know, it's, it's worth you know, paying a little extra um, to get the evolution quality versus, you know, the so-called competition. Um, and so I want to show you a little bit about that and um, the, the differences between that. And oh, also I should mention um, before we get started, and I can mention it again later for anybody who's joining us later, is any of the products that you see today that you would like to buy we're going to be offering free domestic USPS shipping on any of them. So whatever um, you know, whatever you're interested in, we can get it out to you right away, and you won't even have to pay for shipping. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people. Um, so back to the framed insects. So one thing that you'll notice that's different with the way that we position our insects versus the way the other people position our insects, it position their insects is we try and maintain a really lifelike positioning. And so as you can see here, um, if, if it's a little difficult to see with the angle, but um, the wings are pressing up against the glass, um, which is not great because obviously that can lead to smudging and damaging of the specimen. And um, so that's not ideal. And then also, which you might not know if you didn't know exactly what it is that you were looking at, um, this actual specimen, what you're looking at here is the underside of this species wings. So what they have done, but, is an, but they're making it look like the top side. So what they have done is they have ripped off the wings and then stuck them back on and they've done it upside down. And so that's just one of the things that if you are able to sort of, you know, zoom into those details, you can see, you know, the attention to detail that we, that we do versus what some other people are doing. Um, that's no, it's no contest there. And so we take the time, not, we don't rip, you know, the wings off and stick them back on. We actually keep the specimen whole, we position it, we spread it, um, and, we, and we mount them in realistic lifelike positions. Um, so you can see that, for example, um, this, this is a different species of moth, but um, I wanted to show it for comparison. And so you can see this is also the underside, but as you can see, it is mounted in an underside position. 
um, so we didn't try to do any any tricks there. We do sometimes mount them in the top position if you want to see this being the main main view of the insect and sometimes we mount them in the underside position but the specimen is always complete. And then the second thing that I wanted to point out about these other types of butterflies that you sometimes see coming mostly out of manufacturers in South America and I know it's difficult to maybe see the details but the um, antennae are actually um, just like fishing wire. They're just little black plastic twigs. They're not actual authentic antennae. So that's also one of the more, more time consuming and skillful parts of making you know, the framed insects that we do is dealing with the antennae, which are extremely fragile and um, you know, require a lot, of, a lot of skill and precision. And these people are just taking the shortcut, ripping off the antennae and just sticking in some black, you know, black filament, um, black plastic sort of little, little studs there. So that's not ideal. Also, the abdomen is um, made out of clay. So it's, they've ripped off the, basically the only thing that's real here is the wings and then they've stuck them on backwards. So it's a completely Frankenstein uh, creature. The, the abdomen is made of clay and the antennae are made of plastic wire and the wings are on backwards and they're brushing the, the, the top of the glass. So the whole thing is less than ideal. Whereas with our frames, you can see um, the antennae, which are you know, an integral part of, of the specimen. I don't know if you can see here. Um, they curve, they're interesting shapes. They're different from species to species. Um, but the, um, you know, uh, you lose all of that really interesting detail when you just take the shortcut of using fake antennae. And same thing with the abdomens. The abdomens of each species are different, different sizes, different shapes, different colors. And it really detracts from the overall beauty of the specimen when you take that shortcut. So we try and keep everything as intact as possible. We use only, you know, whole complete specimens, real parts, no substitutions, no shortcuts. And we think that's one of the reasons why our product, you know, hands down is more, um, more attractive than, um, than the so-called competition. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention about, um, about our, um, about our specimens is that we have a extremely large selection of species. We have over a thousand different species in our collection and usually other companies only have, you know, maybe five or so different species. So we really pride ourselves on being able to have you know, species from all around the world, really interesting exotic ones, not just the ones that you would see all the time. And I think we have a question. Yeah, Deborah's asking uh, if we made them, make them in the USA. Like if we make yeah, them in the USA. So, so all of our framing is done right here in Delaware County, in New York, in Walton, um, in this building. And so we get the specimens from all around the world, but the actual labor of spreading the specimens, framing them, mounting them, um, packaging them, and then obviously sending them down to the store, that's all local. So um, when you're supporting evolution, you're really support supporting local artisans, local makers, and ultimately local small business. So um, thank you for that question, Deborah. And uh, so another thing, another key difference that I wanted to point out between these um, two different types of items here is that this frame um, obviously has been very heavily varnished. It's very, um, very shiny. And that might be the look that you're going for, which is fine. Our frames are not varnished, um, which I think gives them a really interesting natural look, um, but also gives us more versatility. Um, I believe that they're made out of pine wood. Is that correct? Uh, ash. Ash wood. Ash wood. Um, so... So, and which is a really uh, very strong wood, very good for framing, very good for you know the types of purposes that we have. But also by keeping them unvarnished like this, it means that we're able to adapt the finish to whatever it is matches your decor. So 
we you know sell them like this we sell them often in black frames as well that seems to be a very popular choice but if you wanted them in a slightly darker wood if you wanted them painted red or gold or whatever it is that's going to match your vision for your um for your space we're able to do that because we have these really beautiful um sort of unfinished ashwood frames so that's another advantage that we have is that ability to customize um also another trick that we have is um our frames can be opened so you can see here there's little screws that go into the sides of the frames and to the bottom of the frame rather which means i can remove this part remove the top glass and i can do maintenance to this specimen so you know, probably every month, every two months, we have a customer come to us who said, oh my God, my beautiful frames that I, you know, had for years, uh, fell off the wall, got damaged by the movers, got, you know, somehow something happened to them, earthquake, hurricane, whatever. Can you fix it? And yes, we can, because we can open them up. We can go in, we can do any repairs, we can do cleaning, we can even switch out the specimen. Um, if you decide that you want a different species or we can add in a second specimen or whatever it is, we have that versatility because we have this really ingen you know, um, ingenious way of opening up the frames and being able to do maintenance. We often get customers who bring these types of frames to us and say, can you do a repair or a switch out or something? And the answer is no, because the frame has to be broken in order to get into it. So what we often end up doing is just, you know, if the specimen needs to be saved, for example, we'll switch it into a different, um, into a different frame. And I think we have another question. Yeah, Deborah is asking about uh, the warranty for the bugs. Sure. So um, we stand by everything that we make a hundred percent, and um, customer satisfaction obviously is number one. And um, so we first of all have a blanket two week return policy for anything that goes out. Um, through our website. If you buy something and it's not the way that you pictured it, or of course, if it's damaged or, you know, somehow not, not meeting your expectations, we will take it back, exchange it, try to make it right, refund you if needed. But most of the time we're able to come up with a solution where we can send you a replacement or we can repair the specimen. Um, and, um, you know, we've been very successful with that with customers. And um, I think that, um, you know, we, we pride ourselves on really having excellent customer support and service and following through and standing by any of the products that we make. And um, as I mentioned, customers will come to us, you know, years after they've purchased something and we're more than happy to service the products and, um, you know, make sure that they're being, you know, taken care of. So thanks for that question, Deborah. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is more of an aesthetic thing, um, which, for example, with this frame, you can see it has a hook that stands on the top here. So you put the nail in through your wall and you hang the hook on the, uh, you hang the, the frame on the hook this way, which is fine, but is not quite as discreet as what we've done. So we use a different type of hook that um, you put the nail on the wall and it hangs this way. And so it really looks just like the frame is floating on your wall, which we think is more um, aesthetically pleasing and gives you more of a sort of, you know, more leeway in how you display them, where you display them. We also use larger frames so that they're a little bit more stable. So you can put them on shelves and stuff and they won't tip over quite as easily. So you can either put them on, um, put them on the wall or put them on shelves. These tend to be flimsier, thinner, um, tip over a lot easier. The other thing is they put a big white, you know, crooked sticker on the bottom with the scientific name, which is informative, but also not great because if you're hanging it up, you know, on your wall, if it's high enough up, you pass under it, I'm short. So maybe this is my perspective, but I can see the bottom of this and it's not, you know, it's not pleasing. So we've done a, we've done something a little bit more discreet. We put the label on the back. We use nice printed labels, clear labels, black labels, white labels, depending on the frame. And so that's a lot more discreet. You get the information, but you're really, the, the, the butterfly or the moth or the beetle or whatever it is, the specimen is the star of the show. Um, the frame is just sort of subservient to that. And um, so before I move on from the uh, framed insects into another topic, I believe we have one more question. Uh, we have a few more. Um, so the first one from Deborah again, uh, she's asking how can you customize the frame and I got 
an example of something that we do we can do whatever you want yeah right? yeah so we have um because we make them ourselves we have all different kinds of capabilities of customization so this is a good example of one that's very unique so we had originally painted this frame black and then we sanded it down and distressed it giving us really cool kind of rustic look and again that may not be for everyone obviously that's this is just one style but um, you can basically let us know when you place your order if you want a special color or finish or texture, and we'd be more than happy to work with you. Um, you know, put together some samples and see how it is that you, you know, how how you want to proceed because it's really up to you what the final product looks like. Um, and then we have another question. So, uh, Magnus uh, Servant is asking ethically how are they collected. Uh, and he's a little curious. Sure, yeah, that, we get that question a lot. Um, so thank you, Magnus, for that question. Um, the butterflies, for the most part, are come from butterfly farms. So they're not taken from wild populations, um, which is important. And um, butterfly farming is a really interesting uh, sort of small industry in, um, in, in countries throughout the world, uh, mostly South America, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, places throughout Africa and Asia and South America, really basically all over the globe. And what's really unique about butterfly farming is that it requires the maintenance of the ecosystem because it's done in sort of these outdoor areas. So it means that trees are not cut down. It means that, you know, local, um, you know, local species of, of plants, plant life and animal life, all of that is not disturbed. Uh, water, you know, quality is not disturbed. Um, it's actually preserved and it gives um, indigenous populations a financial incentive to maintain those spaces rather than um, letting them get torn down for more sort of lucrative logging or other kind of, you know, destructive activities. So it is a really interesting, sustainable, um, eco-friendly industry that also supports um, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, indigenous populations in all kinds of areas of the world. So thank you for that question. I think that's very important um, that people know that. Um, so I'm going to move on to our next product, um, which is also an example of how we do things a little bit differently. And um, so this is a wet specimen, which some of you may be familiar with this type of preservation. It is when you basically take a whole animal for the most part and um, it's preserved usually um, with some kind of formalin or formaldehyde injections and then it is placed in a solution um, which can hopefully preserve it, you know, pretty much indefinitely. So in one of our um, recent buying trips, we found this specimen. We thought it was really beautiful and um, we, we thought it was a really interesting sort of um, example of, um, of, of sort of the, the dynamic between, you know, sort of like attraction and repulsion um, that sometimes we see in some of the otter sort of specimens that we have in the store. Um, it's something that's clearly beautiful, but also sort of jarring, no pun intended, and, uh, you know, a, a little discombobulating. And um, that's why we think it's really interesting um, sometimes to find products like that, that have that aesthetic appeal, but then are also sort of like, you know, kind of make you take a little bit of, of a step back. Um, so we find, we found that this specimen was really, really interesting. Um, this is a lovebird um, of the species Agapornis, um, which is native to Africa. Um, originally, but this was actually a pet bird. Um, you can also see, maybe I can get a little bit closer. You can see it has a little bit of a uh, ankle bracelet there, um, which shows that it came from a, 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 the pet trade. And so it belonged to someone who lived in Florida and these specimens live for 20 to 30 years, this species. So this, this pet probably had a very long life and was very well taken care of and died of natural causes and um, then the owner decided to preserve it in this way and I think it went through a few hands and now it's gotten to us. So we thought that this was a really cool interesting specimen that we would be able to share with people. However, 
Um, we think that there are a few things that evolution can sort of add to this product that also separates us from other people who might just, you know, sell you a dead thing in a jar. So for example, one of the differences is um, presentation. We think it's just more, it's really important, especially when you have, you know, we try and honor, um, you know, our, our the, the, the animal products in particular that we get. Um, we want to promote a sort of respect and interest and appreciation for the natural world. And when we see something like this, we really want to present it in the way that's going to really enhance that um, for people. And so we think presentation is important. This um, is an old olive jar that we found, and it has actually been, the top has been painted black. There was a sticker that I removed, and you can see the red, red, red paint, or the, you know, it was black paint over a red jar top. And we think that this, um, this guy deserves a little bit more respect. So we're going to try and find a really cool, maybe vintage, antique, apothecary type jar, something that's going to really make it, you know, make the presentation, take the presentation to the next level. Um, you know, with labeling, we're going to do something a little better than this, hopefully. And um, so we think presentation is important. So that's what we hope to add to this. Um, also, um, right now this is preserved in rubbing alcohol, which is fine. It's effective and a lot of people use it. We typically try to use a glycerin based preservative because it's non-toxic and non-flammable and it does just as good a job of preserving specimens, um, long-term. So we're going to probably switch that out as well. And, um, yeah, so this is another sort of, um, uh, uh, specimen that I wanted to show you that evolution does things a little bit differently with. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn to the actual products that we have available for sale today. Um, but I think first we have a question. Uh, well, I just wanted um, to ask you to, you know, wrap up. Uh, how is it that we choose our products? Uh, we did use these two examples, but yeah. we bring them together. Um, so basically, you know, I think what these products demonstrate is as I, as I sort of alluded to before, we really want to promote an appreciation and a wonder for the natural world. And um, that's so important to us and how we choose what it is that we put in the store. Um, we like things to be aesthetically pleasing. And we also like things to be interesting and draw you in and have that sort of, you know, a pul re repulsion attraction um, uh, dynamic as well. Um, but the thing that we are most sort of, most guided by, I would say, is our attention to detail and our focus on quality, um, because I think that really sets us apart. We only work with like A plus quality specimens. We really think about every single aspect of the product before we put it out. Um, and we are really, really careful because we know that you work hard for your money and we want to work hard for you as well. Um, we want to make sure that what we're giving you is going to meet the highest quality standards and is going to provide, you know, enjoyment and inspiration for generations. We've had pieces in our collection, our personal collection for generation, generations. We've had customers who have been coming to us for generations. These things are, you know, become family heirlooms ultimately. Um, so we really want to respect the, the quality and, and, you know, preserve the high standards that um, people have come to associate with us. So with that, I'm going to turn to our first product for today, which is something I'm very excited about. Um, it is a bowl. Um, this is something that we have never tried before. This is a brand new type of product for us. So I'm going to give you a minute to take a look at it. It is really beautiful. You can see, so this is honey onyx. That's the name of this material. And it is a beautiful yellow, cream, beige, tan, white sort of mixture. Really beautiful. And you can see the shape of it. Really interesting shape. Very large. You can see sort of how I'm holding it quite heavy, has a really nice heft to it, and um, it's really, really striking. So 
Um, just to give you a little information on background on this piece, so um, honey onyx, onyx in general is a silicate mineral, um, and it is more specifically um, a chalcedony. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I've seen it written, but I don't, haven't heard it spoken too many times, um, which means that it has these really fine intergrowths of quartz and, and another mineral called moganite. Um, which you can see here in the banding. And you can see a little bit how it has these beautiful layers of these different types of minerals and these different mineral com combinations. And that's what, what makes this honey onyx. Um, so that's th what makes this unique. I think we have a question maybe about this piece. Uh, Deborah is asking how much for the bowl. Oh, well, I can tell you that. It is um, $8.95. Oh, this is backwards. You won't be able to read that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't think about that. This is our first time doing this. It's $8.95. Um, so it's really, really unique. And um, like I said, it's a one-of-a-kind piece. We've never tried anything like this before. So we're excited to bring it to you. Um, it's from Mexico, um, which historically has been one of the most mineral-rich countries in the world. You hear the legends of El Dorado and stuff like that. Um, so all of South America, Mexico in particular, um, has been known for its really beautiful reserves of minerals. Um, and this is just one example of that. Um, so this piece has been hand polished. So this shape is entirely natural and it has just been polished. And um, you can see it also has a really interesting natural finish. Um, to the edge of it. Um, so it has this rough edge, but the rest of it is very, um, very smooth and it's been polished by hand. And I think we have another question. Yeah, uh, Jade is asking how much can you see through it? Uh, give you a flashlight and can you so, see your hand through it if you put your Yeah, hands? so Honey Onyx is very interesting because it has this very waxy sort of luster. It has. Um, a really, uh, really unique texture that I haven't found in a lot of other minerals. And you can see that um, it is semi-translucent and it's not the way that it feels when you touch it. And that's why, again, you know, we have so much, so many interesting things to touch and feel in the store uh, that we're trying to do our best to bring this to you. It, um, it has a really interesting texture. It's, it's kind of, like I said, it's waxy. It's not totally, totally smooth like glass or something like that. It has a very interesting texture and it is semi, semi translucent. So it's not totally clear, but it's also not totally opaque. Um, so thanks for that question, Jade. Um, uh, we have another question. Can you remind the stream how they can order? This yeah, stuff of course. So if anyone is interested in um, ordering this piece, please send us a private message and it'll be first come, first serve. So whoever messages us, First, um, we, we will you know, get in touch with them and make shipping arrangements. Um, as a reminder, we're also offering free domestic shipping in the U.S. Um, uh, using USPS uh, for anything that you see here today. So please let us know if you are interested in any of these pieces. We would love to send them out to you. Um, yeah, so that is the Honey Onyx Bowl. Very excited. Again, it's $8.95, free shipping. Please contact us if you are interested. So I'm gonna move on now to our next product today, which is a little different. It is a brass skull. So if you are familiar with evolution, you know skulls are kind of our thing. Um, we have them on our logo, we have them on our t-shirts, we have them on our websites, we have lots of different types of skulls. Um, so whenever we find a new skull to add to our collection, we get very excited. Um, this particular skull is made of brass. Um, it's been hollowed out, so it is not too, too heavy, but it is real brass. Um, brass is an alloy of copper and zinc, which I just found out today, which I thought was interesting. Um, and um, this particular piece was made in Russia, um, in the northwest um, region of Russia near Finland. So it comes from way north um, and uh, I just think that it's a really interesting beautiful piece. It is 229 
um, and it's been hand polished. Um, you can see it has this really interesting patina to it. So it's not totally, totally shiny. It's not polished to like a, a total perfect gleam. It has a very interesting shading patina to it, um, which I think is a good indication of sort of the hand, the hand, you know, the hand polished quality of it. Um, it's not really like machine made. It's really finished by hand. So I think that that's always interesting to have you really interesting sort of cracks and grooves and crevices and all kinds of things. Really nice details. It has a hinged mandible. So it can keep you company. And, um, but it has a very seamless construction. So there's no sort of bolts or nails or anything that sticks out that might be unattractive. It's totally seamless and yet it moves. Um, so I think that that is pretty cute. Um, question about this piece? Uh, well, I have. Uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, wanted you to elaborate how hard it is to find good carvings. Yeah. Right? So we there is a there are skulls and then there are skulls. Um, I don't have an example like with the framed insects where I can show you sort of a good carving or a good casting and a less good casting. But skulls in general, um, because they've become really popular, a lot of people are trying to get in the skull game, but. I think there's a big difference between one that's realistic, that's interesting, and one that is, um, you know, very sort of grotesque and like, you know, carved with very little details. You can see sometimes the proportions are just completely off and um, like the, the they're either weirdly elongated or weirdly shortened. Um, the shape and size just don't, you know, just don't conform to sort of naturalistic proportions. And so we, we get excited when we find a new skull that is you know, really aesthetically pleasing, first of all. Um, so this, this vendor that we found this from, it's kind of a totally random story. They, they sell mostly shungite, which is a very black mineral, like a perfectly black mineral. Um, it's actually a crystalline form of carbon, which I found out today as well, done some research. And um, it was interesting because it was just this, this, this vendor's booth was just like a sea of black and then this like gleaming golden skull right in the middle of it really stopped us in our tracks. We we're like this one of these things is not like the others. Um, and, and so that's always interesting. You never know. You walk into someone's store, someone's booth, you go to someone's website, you click around, you, you meet a new vendor and it's just you're surprised by what you can find and so we kind of try and recreate that a little bit actually at evolution a lot of times people come in and they don't know what's sort of around the corner for them so we like to keep that element of surprise so we always appreciate it when we find it in others as well um so yeah so i really like this piece and um it's the only one that we have um it's a one-of-a-kind piece and um as i said it is uh 229 so if you're interested, please send us a message. We'll get it right out to you. Our next piece today is a Mega Raptor Claw. What is a Mega Raptor, you may ask? Now this is a Mega Raptor Claw. Look at the size of this. This is a realistic replica with real proportions made from an actual specimen. So it is extremely realistic. And this is how big they were. This is, you know, this is part of their, um, their would be on their foot. And I believe it's their index sort of toe. So this is what would have been sticking out from their foot. These things are enormous, really, really large, very interesting. Um, so mega raptor means giant thief in Latin. And um, so originally when it was discovered, it was sort of mistakenly thought to be a cousin of velociraptors. So that's kind of why they, um, why they named it that. Now, after further research and further discoveries, they think that it's more closely related to Tyrannosaurus species. So it's actually um, a little bit more closely related to that, but it kept its mega raptor name. Um, the, the original specimen from which this was cast was found in Argentina in the Patagonian region in the Andes mountain range. So um, a very, uh, very rich fossil um, site 
in that region where they're finding really interesting fossils from species, some species that have never been documented before. Um, so it's a really interesting site that they're finding a lot of cool stuff in. Um, this is, um, so that the, the Megaraptors, um, we believe lived during the late Cretaceous period, which would have been about 90 million years old and would have gone extinct um, with the rest of the dinosaurs during the big sort of extinction period. Um, and uh, uh, this is a plaster replica. Um, for the most part, the replicas that we've seen are usually made from resin, um, which is fine, but this is very lightweight and is um, made um, by hand, which I think is also so interesting. Um, it's not sort of cast necessarily from a machine. I think maybe part of it is, but it's hand finished. It's hand painted. Um, it has really, really cool detail, very interesting different shades of brown and black. It really looks authentic, has very cool cracks. It really is an interesting, um, you know, an interesting replica, very cool. Um, so I really like this piece. Um, so I really encourage you guys to check this one out. This one is $29. Replicas obviously are a lot less expensive than, um, you know, the original fossils. So um, I think that uh, this is a really cool find. Um, I think we have a question about this piece. What is it made of? Plaster, made out of plaster. And um, the company we get this from is headed by a husband and wife team um, out of Argentina. Um, they are lovely people. Um, they're, they've been so accommodating with us, um, sending us samples of things uh, that they make. This piece in particular really caught our eye because it's really big <laughs> and uh, impressive. And um, what I think is really cool about um, their company is they're also really committed to local education. So they partner with uh, their local schools. Um, they bring their fossils in for, for students to look at. Um, they do a lot of work in the community. And so I think, um, you know, I think they're doing really important, very cool work. And we're happy to count them among our community of vendors. So um, that is the Mega Raptor Claw. $29. Um, I have a few of these actually. Um, so please, you know, send us a private message if you're interested and um, we will uh, send these right out to you. Um, so the last product that I am going to talk to you about today um, is actually two products. Um, we are going to talk about these two ceramic items, which are super cute. Some of my favorites that were relatively recent additions for us. So these are called Butcher's Cow and Butcher's Pig. And it's basically like the chart you would see or the model you would see in an old timey butcher shop. And it shows you all the different cuts of meat, which I understand is going to be backwards for you guys. But you can get a sense of all the cool details about where your meat comes from, all the different cuts, and it's better than a chart. It's a really nice 3D object, and it looks really beautiful in a kitchen or pantry or study. Very cool. So I know that there's a meat lover in your life um, that's going to be interested in this. These are $49 each. Um, and what's really cool about these, I think, is, um, so they're made, they're ceramic, and they have this very cool cracked glazed detail. I don't know if this can come through. It has this very interesting texture to it, where um, it really gives it like an antique feel. Um, very, you know, it really goes with that vintage quality um, that they are so sort of suggestive of. I hope that you can see that detail because it's very cool. And um, so uh, these are um, imported from Asia, but they're distributed um, by a small company um, here in the U.S. Actually, um, the company is from Long Island. Um, so if you know um, you're out there trying to support um, local businesses, uh, you know, especially in the New York area, by supporting us, you're supporting them as well. Um, this is a local small family business um, 
out of Long Island where they just, you know, find kind of the wackiest things and we really enjoy working with them. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of people being stuck at home are doing a lot more cooking than ever before. Um, and so if you really want to dive into your culinary knowledge, this is a really great way of educating yourself and your family about, you know, gourmet cooking, all different cuts of meat. Um, so it could be a fun way, sort of like an educational, um, educational tool to help pass the time these days. Um, and so we have them available in these two styles. We have a few example. We have a few, um, few of each available. So if you're interested, again, please send us a message, um, and we will get them right out to you. Again, they are forty nine dollars each. So um, with that, I'm going to close. Uh, thank you all so much for joining me today. This was fun, a little nerve wracking, and um, you know, let us know either in the comments or send us a message about what kinds of products you would like us to show next time, and we would love to see you again. Uh, we're planning right now on doing another live stream next week, maybe on Thursday. Um, we'll get back to you. We'll post a, a you know, a, we'll make a post with the details. Um, but yeah, let us know in between now and then. Um, if there's anything in particular, any types of products, any price points, any price, you know, any um, styles of things that you would like to see. And I'd be more than happy to put together another little collection for you. So in the meantime, uh, thanks again for joining us. Um, this has been fun and um, we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.